Well, hi, I'm Pastor Brian, and welcome to week 32 of our Bible study. I'm so happy that you're here. If this is your first time with us in this study, or maybe you've been in it for the whole entire time, which is awesome, um, you can do us a favor. You can like this video, you can comment, and then you can share it on your page, like if you're on Facebook or maybe you wanna share the link that you're watching this on YouTube, however you're watching it, um, you can share this with friends and family and tell them, hey, there's a great Bible study going on and um, I'm sure they would love to watch it. So we're in week 32, like I said, and there's a few things that you're going to need uh, before we get started. One of the things that you're going to need is a good study Bible. Look, I even have my study Bible. It's a big, thick study Bible, right? Um, But you're gonna want a nice study Bible, and the reason for that is you're gonna wanna reference it, you're gonna wanna take notes, so there's some other things that you're gonna need, a notepad or a pen and um, a highlighter so you can highlight things in your Bible. And um, the the translation that I have here, this one's NLT, um, New Living Translation. The NIV is one that we've been looking at a lot in our study and using. Um, and the King James, of course, is another one that we've been using a lot. So those are great versions for you to have. I would say that the King James version is a little maybe harder to understand because of the time frame it was written in. The words are a little harder. Um, So the NIV might be a little easier for you to use and for you to grasp and understand, okay? And then the last thing that you're going to want to do um, preparing yourself for this Bible study is find a nice, quiet place for you to do this study. Don't have distractions around. Don't have the TV on. Don't have music blaring in the background. Don't try to do this while you're driving the car um, because you just won't get all that you want out of it. And um, you'll end up just kind of wasting your time, unfortunately. So just find a nice place that you can isolate yourself for the next 20, 30 minutes and you can do this Bible study and you're gonna get so much more out of it. And so with all that said, getting us prepared for this, let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time and and, uh, that we can be in your word today. We pray that you would open our eyes of our understanding, that you would enlighten us to your truth and show us things to come. We speak these things in your name, in the name of Jesus, amen. So we are in Ephesians. Now there's only six chapters in the book of Ephesians. But um, we are doing an in-depth Bible study, so it's taking us a little longer to get through all of it. And the reason for that is we're looking at words, we're looking at sentences, we're looking at structure of how it was all written. So it's just taking us a little longer, but I want to recap, okay, and give you a breakdown of these verses that we're looking at, okay? We've been looking at, in Ephesians, we're in chapter four, and uh, we've been looking at ministry offices that were given to us. And um, so, if you, we've already covered the first two. Uh, we covered, the first two are apostles and prophets. Uh, Pastor Josh, last week, just got wrapping up with what prophets and prophesying is. He did a great job on that, it was a lot of fun. And we got to hear him sing, so I mean, come on. I'm not going to be singing, so I'm going to save you that, okay? But um, tonight we're studying the fivefold ministry, and the third one in it is evangelist, right? Evangelist. If we go back at this very beginning where Pastor John Mark gave us the passage out of Mark 2, 17, it says this, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. So we know that Jesus was also an evangelist. Jesus fulfilled all the positions of the fivefold ministry. So there is only one who can carry all the gifts and all the callings, and that is Jesus Christ himself. You see, I'm a pastor, I'm not an evangelist, and that's okay. We all have a part to play. Um, we are going, or we are in chapter four, like I said, looking at verses eleven through thirteen, and uh, remember that from verses one all the way to um, sixteen are all about 
the unity in the body, the body of Christ. And in your Bible, it might even be titled that at the top. You'll see a header. It'll say unity in the body. So let's jump into our main text, and that's in Ephesians, like I said, 4, 11 through 13. It says this. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, that's important to remember, mature, attending to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So Jesus gave these positions. Jesus is a gift giver. Now, I like getting gifts, but I like giving them even more. And, you know, Christmas wasn't too long ago, right? And one of the best parts for me, my favorite part, honestly, of Christmas, not only is it remembering what Jesus did for us, but it's being able to, as a father, because I am one, give my son gifts. The reaction on his face and the way that he just lights up, it's classic. And my wife and I, we gave him these different gifts and all these different gifts, you know, the Legos and the clothes and um, the candy and all these different gifts have a purpose, right? They all are unique, but they all have a purpose for him to use. My point is this, we're all given different gifts, but the one that we're looking at tonight is the evangelist. And you may be saying, I don't know if I'm an evangelist. I don't know um, if you are either, but stay with me. Keep your ears open and listen to this. I believe God has something for you in this study. I encourage you to pray about this, to ask the Holy Spirit to show you clearly your spiritual gifts. We're all called to something. Besides the positional gifts that were given in Ephesians, there are other gifts that we can read about. Some are in Romans 12, 6 through 8. And I want to read those to you. We have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is to prof- is prophecy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, no matter what part you are called to be, there is no such thing as just an important part or a non-important part. We are all important to God. Jesus gave these gifts to the church. As long as we have the church, we still have all five of these ministries of office. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist that we're looking at tonight, pastor and teacher. So I had a lot of questions on the topic of evangelists. So let's dig a little bit into it. So what did I do? Well, I Googled this stuff. I Googled it like crazy. I had a lot of fun doing it. But so first thing I Googled is who who is an evangelist? How many evangelists has there been in America in the past 50 years? I had a lot of questions. I even got the worship team in on the conversation of evangelist. And just for fun, like I said, I Googled who was the first evangelist. And a resource came up. It said that Amy Simple McPherson (laughs) was the first evangelist. I got a kick out of that. If you don't know who she is, she was the founder of the Foursquare Church. She was uh, a very anointed person, but definitely not the first evangelist. So my point is be careful the resources that you may find when you Google things. Google's great, but you just got to know what you're looking for. So my big question was this, what is an evangelist? You know, maybe you've heard that word like in the church world, or maybe um, you've just heard that word on TV and all that person is evangelist. And I've had different uh, conversations on who is and who isn't. But what is an evangelist? That's a big question to ask. Well, the book of Acts shows us an evangelist very clearly by showing us one in action, and that is Philip. That's right. Through Philip, we see God raising up an evangelist. We can take some pointers from him. So that's what we're going to do. The evangelist 
has a servant's heart. We can see in Acts 2.18 that Philip is called to be the evangelist. It says it right there in scripture. He was one of seven chosen by the apostles to look after giving food to the widows. We are told he was full of spirit and wisdom. It's clearly seen for his practical care for the needy. Evangelists need to be born in the context of servanthood. If you expect to affect the world with the message of a servant king, you have to have a servant heart. I'm just going to say that one more time. If you expect to affect this world with the message of the servant king, you have to have a servant heart. Evangelists are committed to the ministry of the word of God. Evangelists are committed to the ministry of the word of God. Philip didn't just serve the needy in the church. He did so, so that the apostles could preach the word of God. Philip was serving the word uh, by serving the needy. Philip was serving the word by serving the needy. The third thing is evangelists are adaptable. Think about this, evangelists are adaptable. This actually reminds me of the example of Billy Graham. We've probably heard of Billy Graham, one of the most popular, if not the most popular evangelist of all time. Billy Graham would set up these big crusades to evangelize, but he knew he needed to adapt to the current times. So what would he do? He would have Christian bands play and come in that were current with the times and they would share the message of Christ through their music. This approach was able to reach a generation that he felt he couldn't reach. You know, Paul tells us that he became all things to all men so he could reach more men for Jesus. Corinthians 9.22 says this. This is Paul. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. In other words, Paul was adaptable. He adapted his language, his life to reach people, and with the message of Jesus. Philip does just that in Acts 6 that we see. His ministry to the needy and the widows. In Acts 8, He goes to the Samaritan people. And then again later in Acts 8, he's speaking to the rich and important Ethiopian. The evangelist knows the evangel. This is a very important part. The evangel knows the evangel. The evangelist is someone who shares the good news of Jesus. In Acts 8, God tells Philip to go, and he goes out with that message. And this is where he meets the Ethiopian who's reading the scriptures. There's the interesting thing is that Philip knows the passage that the Ethiopian's reading. And he knows that the Bible is all about Jesus. So we're told that Philip began with that very passage of scripture. And he told him the good news. That's the evangel. That's the message of the evangelist talks about. That's what we're That's what they're called to do, to tell the good news. So what is an evangelist? A servant to the church. A servant to the word of God. Adaptable to the culture and people. An evangelist speaks about Jesus from the scripture. Evangelism is a spiritual gift, but we're all called to share our faith. We all make up the body of Christ, and every part is important. It comes down to this. Mature believers fulfill the Great Commission better. Why? Because we can answer the questions that a sinner may bring up. That's why we're in this Bible study, to become mature believers. I hope this has helped you. I know that maybe you've never thought of the importance of an evangelist, or maybe you've read that scripture before and kind of breezed over it, but there's great importance to the evangelist, and we're giving that great example by Philip in the scriptures. So I want to end us with this prayer. Would you join me? 
God, thank you for helping us understand what an evangelist is and how this position is important to the church. I pray that we all realize and are aware of the gifts you have given to each one of us. Thank you for this time that we can join together to study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have a nice night. We'll see you next week.